What's up fellow bookworms and welcome back to the channel. A few days ago I asked you guys what your best thriller, horror, slash spooky book recommendations were and you guys definitely did not disappoint. And I asked you guys for those recommendations because I wanted to make a video where I read your book recommendations, specifically your fall time spooky season book recommendations, and you guys gave me a lot of really good recommendations. So I wanna try to read these recommendations in about a week. I'm, I'm gonna give myself seven days. I notoriously overestimate my ability to read. I thought I could read The Stand by Stephen King, which is like 1,400 pages in like three days, and it ended up taking almost two weeks. So what will actually happen, I have no idea. But I wanna read about five books in that seven day period. First off is Misery by Stephen King. And this is kind of a uh, self-imposed, I took a little bit of a liberty here because before I asked you for your spooky season recommendations, I asked you guys what book I should read next. So it technically was a recommendation because you guys on that poll chose this book and it is a spooky season book. So I'm putting it on the list if for no other reason other than that, than that I really want to read this book and I'm going to just throw it in there because why not? I'm also reading two books on the Kindle, so I'll just share those really quick. The first one is called The Black by Paul Cooley, and that sounds like a really intense kind of like sea monster story. I don't really like to know a whole lot about books before I go in, and I realize how ironic that sounds because all I do on this channel is like talk about books, so... I don't like to know a lot about books before I read them necessarily. So I just kind of glanced through the synopsis and it sounds like a sea monster thriller slash horror book. So I'm all, I'm all ears for that. It sounds really interesting and I'm excited to get into it. The second book that I'm going to be reading on my Kindle is a book called Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill. This one I have absolutely no idea what it's about at all. When I think of Heart Shaped Box, I think of that song by Nirvana, and that's about all I think about. So <laughs> that's, I don't know what to say. Other than that, I'm excited to read it. And I hear a lot of pretty good things about Joe Hill. His most famous book probably being The Black Phone, but I know he's authored a lot of pretty good horror books. At least that's what I hear. Next up, I'm going to try to read The Last House on Needless Street. I have heard so much about this book lately. My wife, we share an office which is this room, uh, and she's always listening to like other booktubers and watching their reading vlogs. And it seems like every video that she's watched in like the last week has included this book. So got to include it. You guys recommended it. I don't know a whole lot about what it's about. I mean, there's a, like a haunted house and a black cat on the cover. So I can have some guesses. I can make some inferences, but ultimately I don't really know what I'm getting into here but I'm excited to get into it. We've also got The Sundown Motel, which is one that you guys have said a lot about in the comments of other videos, so I am super excited to read this one. You guys said that it was a really quick read and that you all loved it, so that sounds like a pretty solid recommendation to me. I can't wait to dive in to this one, and I've already kind of given a brief synopsis about this when I did that little book haul video, but in case you didn't see that one, all I know about this book is that there is a motel where something bad happened in the 70s, and then presumably the niece of that person that something bad happened to goes back in what is pretty much present day and tries to figure out exactly what happened. That's my uh, understanding of what this book is about. That could be totally wrong. In fact, I would bet money that that is totally wrong, but that's what I expect this book to be about. And then the last book that you guys recommended was Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. And I gotta say that my wife actually read this book like last year maybe or a while ago and she asked me at the time if it was something I would probably ever wanna read. I said no, probably not. So she kinda told me what, what the book was about but it was a long time ago and I really don't remember anything. Yeah, so I got to like page three and it all came back to me. I remembered the twist, I remembered how it ended, so this one did not end up getting read. Instead, I swapped it out for a book called Watchers by Dean Koontz, which is another one that you guys recommended. But those are the five books that I'm going to try to read in the next week or so. We will see about the exact timeline, but I'm excited to get into these. I'm hoping that they're going to set the tone for the rest of the month, so I can't wait. So 
I have been uh, pretty terrible about offering some updates because I have actually finished the black and I am about halfway through Misery. Uh, it has been a few days. I'm not quite on the one book a day schedule that I was hoping for, um, but still, you know, still not doing too bad. But I just wanted to offer some thoughts about The Black before I say anything about Misery. The Black was pretty short. I read it on the Kindle. It's actually available on Kindle Unlimited. So if you want to check it out, you can read it for free if you're subscribed to Kindle Unlimited. It was really interesting. Um, it was about, I think about 300 pages or less. It took four, four and a half hours to read. So it was a really quick read. And it was pretty much everything you would want in a monster type horror book. It was really interesting and pretty gripping. Um, just to kind of break some things down. We'll start with the good things, the things that I did like. I really loved the setting for the book. Uh, basically, like I said, I guess I should say a little bit more first. It is a monster type book. The setting is an oil rig where they are out looking for oil. Now I will say also there were some technical things uh, that were a little bit confusing. I guess I should have saved that for the cons part. But anyway, uh, this, the setting was an oil rig, which is just a perfect setting for a scary book because you're just out in the middle of the ocean with a pretty small crew and there's just no one else for miles and miles and miles. And there's a lot you can do with that, which I think the author did a good job of. Um, there was, for example, like there was a big storm that came which is just kind of terrifying to think about being out on some oil rig in the middle of the ocean and this huge storm comes like that's terrifying in and of itself add in a scary monster and you've got a pretty scary situation. But I did love that the setting was an oil rig. That's very unique. I also thought that the technical side of it though, I did get lost sometimes was pretty well explained. You know, I know pretty much nothing about finding and or drilling for oil, but I thought that the author made it simple enough that I felt like I at least understood what I needed to understand. And that was pretty good. Um, and like I said, the story itself was just pretty gripping for what it was. Now, having said that, those are some of the things, the main things I liked about the book. The cons are that the characters sometimes got pretty muddled. So because this takes place on an oil rig and there's this oil crew, naturally all the characters are men <laughs> except for one. There's one female character in the entire book and that's neither here nor there. That's not a bad thing because, you know, I think the setting demands that. An oil rig is, I would imagine, primarily someplace that men would work. So that makes sense. But it just kind of got confusing at times um, because all the characters were so similar. And another thing that was really confusing was that the author would sometimes call a character by their first name and then without really any explanation would then start calling the character by their last name. So it was very confusing trying to remember who was who. And there was also this kind of hierarchy structure on the, on the boat, I guess, on the rig where there was, you know, obviously like a head dude in one area, but then there was another guy who was like head of something else. And it was hard to remember like who was head of what, who was in charge of what, whose crew was what, that kind of thing. And there was a certain section of the book where they kind of split up later in the book once the monster has, you know done its monstrous work and killed a lot of people. There's not that many people left. They split up and it was very confusing trying to keep track of which party was which, who was doing what. The only way I could try to keep them separate was when the female character was present because I knew that whatever group she was in was her group and the other group was the other group. But even still, it was pretty confusing some of the times. And then, and this is not really a huge con, but I felt like the story, or the monster specifically, was sort of cliche, but not in necessarily a bad way. So this isn't really a con, but it's just something that I'll mention. So obviously, you know, I'm a big believer that there's no such thing as originality. Certainly some things are more original than others. I mean, think about Lord of the Rings. That is, that is pretty close to a purely original thought, <laughs> I think, as you can get. But... Ultimately, I think everything is somewhat of a copy of something else. Everything is inspired by something else and that kind of thing. So it's clear to see that the monster, intentionally or not, was inspired by some other uh, well-known, at least one well-known monster, which was The Blob. If you saw that movie, 
I think it came out in like the 50s or something, The Blob. That was basically the monster in this book, except that the monster was like oil related. That's not really a spoiler. You find out in like page 10. So, you know, it was The Blob, but with a little bit of a twist, which I'm perfectly fine with. I mean, you know, it's not an exact copy. It was different. And then there was also some elements of, and this is kind of obscure, but there was a movie called Life that came out not that long ago. It was like an alien movie with a kind of similar premise. Like they're out in space and they come across something that doesn't initially look like anything. And then it kind of uh, gets out of hand. I'll say, I'll leave it at that. Um, and it kind of just felt like those two ideas got meshed together. Again, not a bad thing at all, but... Just something that was a little bit distracting because the whole time I was reading about the monster, I was like, wow, that sounds exactly like the blob. Or wow, that sounds exactly like the alien from that movie Life, that kind of thing. But overall, I thought it was a good story. I did rate it on Goodreads three stars, which for me is just like, I didn't absolutely love it. It wasn't my favorite book. I won't be thinking or talking about this book very much in the future, but it definitely wasn't bad and was certainly worth the four, four and a half hours it took to read. So that was the book called The Black. Now let's move on to Misery. Like I said, I'm about halfway through this book, and I gotta say that I had high expectations going in, and this book has certainly met those expectations thus far. Um, it's kind of amazing to think that a story about a guy lying in bed could be so in interesting and enthralling and gripping. I mean, I feel like, you know, as I said before on this channel, a book or even a movie that's been out for several decades, I feel like I can talk a little more freely about. You know, I feel like you've probably definitely seen the movie if you haven't read the book. So you know that the main character, and you find out on like page five if you haven't, gets in this car wreck, breaks his legs, basically shatters them, can't move, can't do anything. He's found by this lady who takes care of him. If I wasn't holding a book and a mic, I would have done air quotes there. She takes care of him, air quotes. And uh, basically tortures him throughout <laughs> the entire story. And it's just really interesting. Absolutely loving this book so far. I have really high expectations. I know that a lot of times people say Stephen King uh, doesn't really write great endings. I haven't read that many of his books so far, so I don't know if that's true or not. But I am a little, not worried, but uh, I'm going to keep an eye out for the ending. I'm going to try not to expect too much. We'll see what happens. But so far... Misery is very, very good. So that is the update. As of now, I will try to do better about providing some more play-by-play -play updates as we go. I know this was kind of a long rant, so I'll try to keep it shorter moving forward, but that's that for now. So I have just finished Misery, and you guys, I absolutely loved this book. It was so thrilling, it was so gripping, and I really loved the premise. It was very simple. I mean, at first, I mean, I know Stephen King can be a little bit uh, long and uh, detailed with his descriptions, but I was really wondering, like, a book about a guy in one room, basically, for 300 plus pages, how is that going to work out? It definitely worked out. It was... It was just good. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to say really other than that it was very good. I would highly recommend this book if you haven't read it already. So there is a movie based on the book. I hear that the movie is fairly different and not as good as the book, but that's usually almost always the case. So my expectations compared to the book for the movie are kind of low, but I am excited to watch it. So we're going to watch that movie now and hopefully it is as good or close to as good as the book, but we'll see. Next book that you guys recommended that I'm going to read is a book called Watchers by Dean Koontz. I've never read anything by Dean Koontz before, but this sounds like a really interesting book. 
It's about a golden retriever with like super, not superpowers, but like super intelligence or something like a very smart golden retriever. So it makes sense that I uh, talk about this book with my dog. She's currently uh, laying down and scratching her head. Come here, Bailey. Come here. So Bailey, Watchers is about a golden retriever with um, really cool powers. Do you have any powers you'd like to share? <laughs> Does it make you jealous knowing that there are golden retrievers out there with powers? Yeah. So I just finished Watchers by Dean Koontz, and I gotta say, I actually really enjoyed that book. I'll admit, I've always kind of thought of Dean Koontz as like a poor man's Stephen King, kind of. Uh, I don't really know why. I guess because their books are always right next to each other at the bookstore, but Stephen King, at least in my mind, has always been significantly more popular than Dean Koontz, but... Either way, I really, really enjoyed that book. There were a lot of really interesting elements in the book. Um, without giving a whole lot away, I didn't actually think about what I was going to say about the book before I, I was just really excited to start recording. Um, but we've got kind of a, not supernatural, but uh, kind of like a man-made supernatural thing, if that makes sense, in these two creatures. One is a dog that has been... Uh, genetically modified, sort of, that's a short version, to be hyper-intelligent. And we've also got kind of the uh, antithesis, antithes, antithesis, that's not the right word, but we've also got like the opposite of that uh, in this kind of mysterious killer creature. And so the book is really centered around these two creatures and the people that um, invest in them in some way without you know, saying a whole lot here. It's basically a simple story of good versus evil with a really interesting cast of characters that insert themselves in this sort of simple struggle of good versus evil. And there's also some elements here of like this idea of uh, what man is capable of and what man's responsibility is towards uh, what he does, or in this case, what he creates. And that's not going to make any sense without actually reading the book. So I'm just going to stop because unless you read the book, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But this was definitely a five-star read for sure. I really, really loved this book. It did take <laughs> uh, significantly longer than I anticipated, which is super uh, uncharacteristic for me. Uh <laughs> so the next book I'm going to read is probably going to be The Sundown Motel. This one seems really interesting. I've talked about this book a few other times on the channel, so I won't say a whole lot here, but I know that this is about um, some things that happen at this hotel. I don't know if the hotel is actually haunted, but something bad happens at the hotel in the past, and now... Uh, more information about what happened is trying to be uncovered in the present. So it's kind of, it sounds like a mystery, sort of, like a detective type thing, but I'm sure there are going to be, well, I'm not sure, but I'm fairly certain there are going to be some paranormal, paranormal elements involved with it. So it's pretty short. I mean, it looks kind of thick, but the formatting and everything in this book is such that it will be hopefully a shorter read than Watchers by Dean Koontz. Hoping to finish this one by tomorrow, the next day at the latest. So I will see you in the next update. So I'm about halfway through the Sundown Motel, about page 180 or so, and I just wanted to pop in and give a quick update on my thoughts so far. I'm going to try to be a little more systematic with what I say and do a little more than just, oh, it's good so far, or oh, it's not so good so far. So uh, I'll start with the things that I like. I like the premise. Um, it's a really interesting concept of like present day trying to figure out what happened 35 years ago in the past pretty interesting concept. I love the setting of like a rundown motel. It just seems like the 
I mean, everyone's been to, or at least seen, a not so amazing motel. And you can just imagine, you know, the creepiness of it. I just love the setting. It's such a really good idea, such a really thought out, just perfect place for the story to take place. And then also upstate New York is, again, just kind of a perfect setting, rural, small towns, that kind of thing. And the characters are pretty good so far, but that kind of leads me into the things that I don't absolutely love up to this point. And that is that the two characters, like we're following the present day girl who is trying to figure out what happened to her aunt 35 years ago in the eighties. And the problem is that they've kind of morphed into basically the same person. I assume that was done on purpose, probably some symbolism, probably going to maybe be relevant at the end, I don't know, but it's kind of difficult to remember who is who and what they're doing. So for example, like back in the 80s, that character, she has a couple of guys that she's like has interacted with and has sort of become friends with, became friends with, and then modern day character the niece of that character has basically done the same thing. And without giving too much away, they've just basically assumed the same exact lives. Um, I'm debating whether or not I want to say it's really not, I don't think a spoiler. I haven't finished the book, so I will say, but if you absolutely don't want to know anything about a book before you go in and you are interested in reading this, maybe cover your ears for a second. But basically both characters are now working at the sundown motel and both characters live in the same apartment and both characters have a female roommate, and both characters have talked to basically the same people. So you can see how it's getting very confusing to try to remember who's who, even though you know each chapter tells you the year and the character. It still gets kind of muddled and kind of confusing. And then another thing too is like present day 2017 character, well, 2017 is in the book. I obviously know that it's not 2017. Uh, but 2017 character, what is which is supposed to be modern day, is like talking about the same people who were murdered in the town. And then 1982 character is talking about the same people who were murdered in the town. So it's just like, kind of almost feels like too much and is hard to keep up with. And is like, part of me says the cynic in me says the, the critic cynic negative, whatever part of me wants to say that like maybe the author, I mean, definitely had a really good idea and a really, I mean, just a really great premise that I'm really enjoying, but it almost feels like it's kind of being milked a little just to get to the 300 page count. That seems like is the standard for a full length novel these days. There's just lots of little parts that are like all the murdered girls. I could be a murdered girl. This town is full of murdered girls. And it's just like over and over, we get it, rehashing the same things. Like I said, there are other people who were killed in this town that we just kind of keep revisiting. And I realize that there's kind of a mystery element here. There's like amateur detective things going on. I understand, but it's almost too much. Emphasis on almost. Uh, it's still good and I'm enjoying it a lot, but it's becoming almost too much <laughs> to try to keep up with and just read the same exact things over and over. But anyway, I've been rambling and ranting a little bit too long. I'm hoping to finish this book probably tomorrow. I want to say tonight, but I know myself better than that. I will pop in again if anything significant happens or if there's any major updates. But for now, I would say that I am enjoying this book quite a bit. So I took a little break from reading to go watch the new Halloween movie, and as you can see, we had the entire theater to ourselves. So I've just finished the Sundown Motel, and I gotta say that pretty much everything I said in the last update still rings true. I did really enjoy this book, and I ended up rating it four stars on Goodreads. I would say really a more true rating would probably be somewhere in the 3.5 to 4.0 range because I really did enjoy this book. It was a super quick, easy read that was, it was just good. It was enjoyable and it was fun. But the complaints that I had in the last update, I think are still, like I said, true. Uh, it was kind of confusing at times, even though I pretty much read this, not in one shot, but you know, I, I only took a little while to read it. 
it kind of got confusing trying to keep up with the characters. And every time I did put the book down and then pick it back up, I had to try to remember like, okay, this character has these people surrounding her. This character has these people. And they're also still talking about like the same other people that have been murdered throughout. So like in the eighties talking about those people present day talking about those people. So just in short, because I'm sure this video is already getting pretty long in short, the story was great. The execution was a bit confusing, but it was worthwhile, and I certainly did enjoy it, and I'm glad that I read it. And I thought the ending was somewhat predictable, sort of twisty, but not like a mind-blowing twist, and very satisfying. So I would recommend this book, like I said, probably 3.5 to 4 point, star, four, <laughs> 4 point stars, 4.0 stars. Somewhere in that ballpark. So now the next book that I'm reading is Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill. I've actually already started this one. I'm on like chapter five or six or something, about 10% of the way through the book. And it's pretty good so far, I will say. First couple chapters, I wasn't really, I don't know, the writing style just felt kind of weird at first, but I have gotten used to it and I am enjoying it so far. It is shaping up to be like a sort of, not classic haunted house, but a lot of the same elements that are found in like a haunted house story. There are some interesting dynamics going on. I mean, character is somewhat interesting. And I think the premise is pretty good about how he actually begins to be haunted. Um, it's just, yeah, pretty good so far. Like I said, I'm only like 10% of the way through. So I will definitely give you guys at least one update before I do finish it. And then I'll give you my final thoughts once it's done. But for now, I'm going to try to spend the rest of the day reading Heart Shaped Box, but uh, we will, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> So I'm editing the video right now and for whatever reason, I am missing the clip where I talk about Heart Shaped Box. I actually ended up DNFing Heart Shaped Box. I just couldn't get into it. I gave up at like the 80% mark, which feels kind of dumb, but I just didn't care to finish it. I have a lot of other books I can and want to read instead. So I gave up on Heart Shaped Box. It just wasn't for me, but it was a good recommendation and I could definitely see why other people would like it. Okay, back to the video. So uh, it is about to be October 29th. It is almost midnight. And um, I am on page two of The Last House on Needless Street. So I had to make a decision, one that I didn't wanna make, but uh, this video obviously took a lot longer than I was expecting it to. I knew that it was a little ambitious, but you know, as per usual, uh, I read much slower than I expect to. So in order for this video to be somewhat relevant when it gets uploaded, because if I don't post it before Halloween, you know, November 1st is basically Christmas Eve these days. So uh, spooky season will be over <laughs> on midnight, October 31st, I'm sure. So I kind of want to just upload this video. I hate to not read Needless Street and give my thoughts on it, but just for the sake of all the effort that I've already put into this video and hoping that at least more than two people maybe will watch it, I'm going to call the video here. I'm going to save the last house on Needless Street for next time. But I thought before I did end it, I would give kind of a little recap on the books that I did read, share some final thoughts on them, especially now that there's been some time for them to stew. Also, a couple books that I ordered came in, so I thought I may as well share those with you guys real quick. Uh, these are both books by Stephen King. I am slowly trying to amass a Stephen King collection. The first one is a book that 
Sorry, that was probably super loud. The first one is a book that uh, someone recommended just a few days ago by Stephen King. That is Needful Things. I actually have no idea what this book is about, but one of you guys commented that I should read it. And I mean, any excuse to buy another book. So I bought it. Pretty chunky, I guess, as per usual with Stephen King books. So this one looks like it's about a person who opens up a shop in Castle Rock, Maine, where in order to buy something, you have to uh, spend a little bit of money and also do something bad, presumably, to someone else in the town. That's interesting. And then the next one is just classic Stephen King, a must have if you're going to try to collect all of his books. And if I can open it, I'll show you what it is. Okay, that took an, an embarrassingly long amount of time. Pet Cemetery. This is the movie tie-in edition, which is actually kind of cool. I kind of like this one. So, yeah, those are the two books that I ordered within the last few days. So uh, let me know if you've read either of these books or if you saw Pet Cemetery. What do you think of it? I know it's a classic. The book's a classic. So let me know. All right, so to recap the five books that I read in this video, the first one that I read was a book called The Black, which was just a fun monster book, monster story, with a pretty unique setting, kind of forgettable characters, kind of stereotypical monster, but with an interesting twist. I rated that book three stars, and I still think that's fair. I would recommend the book. I, you know wasn't my favorite, it's not the most memorable thing that I have ever read, but it was fun and it was worth reading. So if you want a good monster story, I would recommend The Black and thank you for recommending it to me. I appreciate that. <laughs> and the second book that I read in this video was Misery by Stephen King, which was by far my favorite book that I read in this video. I rated it five stars. It was just, it was just a really great story. It was, scary but not in like your monster jump scare kind of way it was truly like a psychological thriller of not knowing what was going to happen to our main character i mean it's a classic you've probably either read the book or seen the movie so you know it's about a guy who gets in an accident and this uh, mentally unstable uh, woman takes care of him air quotes sort of <laughs> takes care of him and uh Obviously, she's mistreating him throughout the process, and so it's a simple concept. I mean, it's really remarkable that Stephen King could take, you know, a guy laying in bed and write 300 pages about it, but it was really, really good. Highly would recommend. I watched the movie after I read the book, and the movie was not as good as the book, but I did really, really enjoy it. So 10 out of 10, five stars, would recommend the book would recommend the movie. After that, I read Watchers by Dean Koontz, and I was actually really surprised to find that I enjoyed that book. I have a golden retriever, and the main character, if you will, in this book is a golden retriever, so I gotta be honest, if the main character wasn't a golden retriever, maybe I would have liked it less, but I just had a fun time with it. It was a little bit cheesy at times, but overall, I mean, I rated this five stars. It was fun. It was quick to read. It was a, just an easy, fun, pretty exciting book to read uh, with a really interesting premise. Uh, an animal, two animals, technically, uh, with supernatural-ish abilities. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Watchers by Dean Koontz was one that I would recommend. And again, thank you to the person who recommended that one to me. And then I read The Sundown Motel, which was also pretty good. I rated that one four stars. It was a good story, and I really did appreciate the premise. It was kind of like a haunted house, but instead of a house, it was a haunted motel, which I thought was really cool. My biggest complaint about that book is one that I, I've already said a few times, and it was just that it got kind of confusing because we're following two people. We're following an aunt or an aunt, if you're cultured, and her niece. And they basically live the same life, just at different time periods. One is in the 80s, one is in pretty much present day. We flash back and forth between the two, but at one point, they're basically living the same life, doing the same things, 
talking about the same people. So it just got really kind of muddled and hard to follow at times. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. But other than that, it was a really interesting story. Somewhat predictable ending, but most of the good books do have predictable endings. And honestly, I think maybe that's why we think they're good because they give us what we expect and what we want. And that's what this book did. So again, minor complaint. It was a little hard to follow at times, but otherwise it was a really great haunted house slash motel story with some interesting mystery elements along the way. And then the last book, and I hate to end on this note, but the last book that I read was Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill. And as you already know, I just didn't care about that book. Uh, it started off okay. I mean, I really, first couple pages, I was just turned off for whatever reason. Didn't really like the style. Just wasn't my thing. But then it got kind of interesting, and I thought that the premise was pretty good. And it was just kind of a unique take on a ghost story. But it was just needlessly vulgar at times, and it just got to be just weird. And I don't know just weird is the best way I could describe it at 82% or something like that. I just didn't care what happened. So I gave up on it. I do know a lot of people love this book and I could definitely see why. Um, but for me, I don't know. I just, from the very beginning, found it hard to get into it, hard to care about our main character. So I hate to be a letdown, especially at the end, but those are the books. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these. Obviously, you guys are the ones who recommended these books to me, so I know some of you guys have read some of these books, but let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you've read some of these books, and also, please don't hesitate to share some other book recommendations. Honestly, it's amazing to me that you guys take the time to comment on these videos or on my posts over on the community tab and recommend books to me. Uh, that's just the coolest thing. So if you've got a book that you think I might like, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And if you haven't already, please consider hitting the subscribe button. That would mean a ton to me and it would help the channel out a lot. I'd love to have you as part of this little bookish community. Come back, watch another video. Let's hang out again. Until then, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.